Hi guys and welcome back. Today we will talk about Ethereum and more precisely about the roadmap of Ethereum 2.0. You probably have seen Vitalik speaking at the ETH CC, so in Paris, and he explained the full roadmap. I want to tell you exactly what happened and what we can expect in the different phases of this process. Most of all, we will try also to understand in which way the price of Ethereum will behave and what we can expect short term, but most of all, long term. Just let me say that this channel is about educational content and nothing has to be intended as financial advice. If you want to invest in anything, that's great, but do always your own research first. And guys, as you have seen into my last video, we have changed a lot. We are now DeFi Talks. And if you missed that video, we'll leave also the link in the right corner here. Remember that there are many other channels that we are working on with the many other media. You can retrieve all the official links into the description below. Plus, guys, remember, if you enjoy this content, remember to leave us a big thumbs up and drop a comment. It is just a small effort for you, but really means a lot to us. So let's start immediately. What we are seeing into the background is the roadmap. And as you can see, it is divided in different phases. The phase that we are right now, it is called the merge. And after that, there will be the surge, the verge, the purge and the splurge. So are different names. And I will explain to you exactly what you can expect from each of these phases. I want to add that in the moment when we will be uh, at the end of the merge, so it should be because obviously uh, delays are quite normal into a process that is so complex because uh, transitioning from proof of work to proof of stake, it is something that is huge. So at the moment, the expected uh, delivery date is uh, uh, the uh, 19th of September. I don't know if it will be the real one, for sure. Keep in mind this date because it can change everything. Uh, at the end of this process, we will be around 55% of the roadmap of Ethereum. The point is obviously how long it will take to deliver the whole roadmap. Because as I will tell you in a moment, guys, remember, the merge, so the phase that we are transitioning just right now, it doesn't mean that the theorem will become more scalable and it doesn't mean that the fees will be cheaper. In order to have more scalability, we will have to wait for the uh, next phase that is expected to be completed in 2023 or at least this is the expectation, but we know that this kind of process can take really a long time. As you know, just to complete the merge, just to complete the uh, process from proof of work to proof of stake, it took us something like uh, five, six years, because it is a long time that we have been listening about these talks. So what is changing going from proof of work to proof of stake? This is the main difference. As you can see here, ETH that are issued every time that a new block is produced. As you can see right now, the mining rewards are something like 13,000 of ETH per day. This is the main difference because this amount will disappear. This kind of rewards will not be anymore distributed to the miners. And that's the main thing. And that's also the reason why we should start to look at also to a Ethereum Classic that will stay with proof of work because maybe many miners will go from Ethereum to Ethereum Classic. So who knows? Maybe also in Ethereum Classic, we will see more traction, more interest. I don't know. That's just a speculation, but something to be aware of. On the other side, staking rewards will remain the same and will be a 1,600 Ethereum per day. What does it mean? It means that, and that's the main difference, is that Ethereum will go from an inflationary asset to a deflationary asset. I'm using ultrasound.money just to show you how much the supply is growing in this moment. As you know, probably each transaction is, or better, each block is burning also a certain amount of ETH. As you can see from this first uh, information here, barn, each year we are burning something like 0.9 million of ETH. Obviously, this number is much higher if the traction, if the number of transactions that are processed by the uh, blockchain is higher. The more it is the usage of uh, the blockchain, higher is the amount of ETH that are barred. 
Even so, at this moment with this kind of system where we are rewarding miners, the amount of inflation is something like 3.8 per year. But if we try to simulate the merge, you will see that in this moment, even right now, that the amount of usage of the blockchain is not so high, we will have a deflationary asset of around 0.2% per year. So we will have deflation instead of inflation. Obviously, this number can change. As you can see, just changing the time frame and using the last year, it will be something like 1.7% of deflation because obviously higher the usage, higher the amount that we are burning and obviously higher is the deflation. Remember guys that it doesn't change how much fees we are paying right now. In the moment when we will have the merge, we will still pay a lot of fees on Ethereum. On the other side, also the amount of transaction that Ethereum will be able to process will still be the same. So it will take much longer to see real scalability. And the real scalability will come only with the surge. The surge is where they will start to use the sharding. What is sharding? Sharding is, as you can see from this image here, simply means dividing in different blockchains or, or better, in different process that are working in a parallel. So it means that at the same time you can process more transactions. This should improve the amount of uh, transactions that uh, Ethereum is able to process to up to 100,000 of transaction per a uh, second. Or at least this is the estimation by uh, Vitalik that has been done just at a conference. Going on, because it's not ended here, this is obviously the main part. The surge will be the point that will change, it will mark the major change into the Ethereum blockchain. Until that moment, yes, the main point is that we will have a deflationary asset that in the long term will obviously appreciate the price because it means that if a higher demand will come, we will not have any kind of inflation in order to absorb it. So each person that wants to buy will push the price higher because the offer, so the amount of Ethereum that is in circulation is going down every day. So obviously the buying pressure will be much higher. So that's the reason why we can expect a higher price. Just to make it even easier, even if the same market cap, even if Ethereum will maintain the same market cap, the price with a deflationary asset should go up. So that's all. The surge, so we'll have the scalability. After that, we will have the verge. What does it mean? It is quite complex from the technical point of view. Say it it's simple, is that a way to make it more simple to create an also to increase the number of validators. And the same will happen for the next phase that is called the purge. The purge because most of or better, it will be optimizing the amount of data that are saved in order to eliminate a certain amount of historical data that are not anymore important. The main consequence of this choice is that the amount of data that are saved into the blockchain is lower. And this will increase also the decentralization because remember, in order to have a real decentralization, what we need is requirements in order to run an order. An order is the entity that is in charge to validate the different kind of transactions. So the more nodes we have into an infrastructure, the more decentralized it is and also obviously more secure because the probability to have, for example, a 51% uh, attack, it is much lower. In order to reach this kind of goal about decentralization, what they will do is eliminating all the different data that are not anymore uh, necessary. The final phase that is also called the splurge, it is what uh, Vitali has defined as the fun part. So where they are just working in order to optimize the process in order to make it more smooth and so on. But if I have to be honest, I think that the last part of the roadmap with any probability will go through some major update during the time. Because obviously, if you think about it, it took us so long to reach the merge. And obviously, each year that is going on, each year that we are just producing new innovation, maybe also Vitalik will change his mind and also seeing new technologies 
also maybe the way that the theorem is uh, simply evolving will change. What is important is not really remembering what each phase uh, will uh, produce and will introduce. What is important to remember is that a theorem is working from one side to make it more energy efficient. Because obviously, in order to scale, in order to produce more uh, uh, transactions, they can't just stay with a proof of work that is producing so much uh, environment impact. Not to mention that all in this moment, uh, in this uh, historical moment, many governments are trying to fight this kind of stuff. So going from a uh, proof of work to proof of stake, this is something that is really good for environment and also at the same time from the image of cryptos for the branding point of view. Not to mention that, as I was telling you, going from uh, an inflationary to the deflationary will increase the price long term of Ethereum. And that's something that is for sure. So what we have to uh, remember about uh, this roadmap is that, yes, they are trying to increase the value long term and try to have a more robust uh, brand. On the other side, they are working on scalability and also they are focused on decentralization. At this point, their idea of decentralization is just uh, trying to make it more uh, more easy to increase the number of nodes. But maybe in the next future we will have some other technology that will enable us to use uh, to have much uh, bigger nodes or nodes that are not so worried about the kind of requirement. This is just a speculation just to tell you that yes, don't take this roadmap as something that is uh, like the Bible. It is this way and it will ever be. It is something that will change because obviously the environment is changed, the technologies are changing. What is important to understand is the mindset that Vitalik has shared. So uh, compliance, scalability, and decentralization. Going back, it is everything that is about the three lemma. The three lemma is the main point and what you should take in account. From the point of view of the price, what we can expect from Ethereum in the next future. First of all, it is true that um, until the merge and if the merge will go uh, smoothly, it is possible that we will see more hype around Ethereum, so also a price that can surge. On the other side, it could be quite, uh, I don't know, naive or at least it is too early to say that um, it is able to grow, to reach 3K, 4K again, at least uh, in the short term. I think that is much more probable that Ethereum can try to fight to reach again 2K and after that we will have to see if it will be able to break them or if it will find a major resistance. Because still remember, we are in a bear market and we have to follow all the major and macroeconomics events that will uh, affect the price of Ethereum. I still think that all of these updates will bring the results, so they will affect the price much more into the long term uh, view instead of the short term. Yes, in the short term, we will have some kind of bounce that can bring us even farther. We have just done something like plus 60% in the last couple of weeks, and that's something that is amazing. But uh, at the same time, we still have some kind of upsides in the short term. But remember that everything is connected to the overall market. I don't think I'm not seeing an Ethereum that just because the merge is able to go from its own path and just growing, reaching 3K, 4K again and so on. At least that's just my personal opinion. Let me know what you think about it. Just use the comment section below. And guys, remember, if you enjoy this content, leave us a big thumbs up. And if you want to know more about uh, our different channels, remember to check them into the description below because we are using also Twitter, we have our weekly newsletter and much more is coming. Guys, thank you for following me and I will see you soon. Bye guys.